Welcome, boxing enthusiasts, to our favorite section, the most brutal knockouts. Get comfortable because today is guaranteed not to be boring. On December 17, 2016, Hassan Indam Injikam won the interim WBA middleweight title, destroying the previously undefeated Venezuelan Alfonso Blanco in the process. In the first round, the Frenchman viciously knocked out the champion with a powerful right to the temple. It was not a sight for the faint-hearted. On April 19, 2013, Dominican Javier Fortuna made his first defense of the interim WBA title in the super featherweight division. And he did it uniquely fast and brutally. Mexican Miguel Zamudio was destroyed in the first round. First, the champion's powerful left punch sent him into a heavy knockdown. And a few moments later, the same left punch put a fat period in the unequal confrontation. Good night, beautiful left hook from Javier Fortuna. The training did not make that much of a difference, Teddy, as you were stating. No, because talent is talent. And that's why I said that it would end very early. Because to me, this was a mismatch when it was made. But Zamudio just does not belong in the ring. With Fortuna. Now, all that Fortuna has to do now oh, is make sure he sets up the power punch, the south wall, left hand, and that's what he did, and it's all over. And again, a mismatch when the contract was signed. Why can I stand here and say that it's going to be an early round, an early night? Why can I say on a fight plan with Fortuna? I mean, this is a scary knockout for. Miguel Zamudio, and that's what happens. You put a fighter at risk when you put him in against a top-level opponent. Recording an interim title. First of all, it's absurd that you're in a business that has interim titles. I mean, the, the good human man. Every event that it takes place in professional boxing has an ambulance at the ready, has... Need to do. Let's take a look at the first knockdowns. The power punch. On November 4th, 2005, in a clash between two undefeated prospects in the super middleweight division, Alan Green made a serious statement by brutally annihilating Jaden Codrington. Already in the 18th second of the fight, Green's series of punches sent his opponent into a heavy knockout. And he has rocked Codrington's world and left. And it's off. It's over. Over in 18 seconds. Alan Green shocks the world. Nick, he said he'd be aggressive from the start. I didn't believe him. He proved uh, what he said he meant. He absolutely devoured the New Yorker, Jadon Codrington, on the ground. Now, let's listen in. Chaos, they need the doctors there, and they're getting them and attending them to Jadon Cockington. Who looks seriously hurt here. Nick, th th it's such a disgrace when a fighter is in need of medical care like Codrington. Look at him. And 400 people are in the ring. It's absolutely absurd. There should be better control. On June 18, 1973, former heavyweight world champion Jimmy Ellis entered the ring against the dangerous puncher Ernie Shavers. Shavers' punching reputation was confirmed in the very first round when a deadly right uppercut felled Ellis like a tree.
On May 9, 2015, Saul Alvarez achieved one of the most brilliant victories in his professional career, destroying the entertaining brawler James Kirkland in less than three rounds. Well, Canelo taking his time and landing the big shot. Oh, right hand. Down goes Kirkland. Oh, possible opportunity for the first Here you see Canelo down left by the shot, followed by a straight right hand, right down the pipe. That hurt, and that sent Kirkland out for yes, it And coming back. And telling him to cut there he is. Uppercut knocks Kirkland down. Knocked out, just knocked down. Right. Second uppercut continues to land. There's a perfect straight right hand and short of performance by Canelo Alvarez. Right over the top with the overhand right. He knew that Kirkland was prone to getting knocked down and he keep working the body shots. If you watch this attack, Canelo always got good. There he aims low and then fires upstairs. That's, a perfect feint. That's what I call look down but come up. On July 15th, 1989, the superb Evander Holyfield once again delighted his fans with a bright performance. Strong Brazilian Edelson Rodriguez, who had a victory over former title contender James Tillis, entered the ring ready for a real fight, not just to go through the motions. But the price for his desperate resistance was very harsh. Holyfield's powerful right punch sent Rodriguez into a deep knockout already in the second round. The huge crowd coming over from Brazil, thinking upset. This has got to be a surprise to this point, the way Rodriguez has responded. Uh, more a surprise the way that uh, Holyfield has not. Right now, Holyfield is getting untracked. He's and finally the woke up. Fans are going wild, but down goes Rodriguez. Out of nowhere, Adelson Rodriguez is on the canvas. He's not getting up. He, got, he hit his head on the canvas, and he's not getting up. It's all over. Here in the second round, Evander Holyfield has KO. And Rodriguez. A perfect shot, but the way he went back, he hit that with canvas with his head, and it truly knocked him out. He still starts there. People are trying to gather around him, and uh, I think they should take their time. When a fighter is knocked out, clear the public away, let the doctors in, get the cornermen away from who have a Former super middleweight world champion Lucien Boutte can't boast victories over top-tier stars, but his fights have usually been spectacular. On July 9, 2011, the undefeated Lucien, defending his IBF title in the 76.2 kilogram weight class, squared off against another undefeated boxer, Frenchman Jean-Paul Mendy. Boutte confidently controlled the fight in the first three rounds and spectacularly knocked out Mendy with a perfect left hook in the fourth. <laughs> On July 21, 2001, the excellent Sugar Shane Mosley once again shone before his fans. Mosley's combination in the third round resulted in a knockout, as he successfully defended his WBC title in the welterweight division against Adrian Stone. <laughs> they found something funny in there. Uh, we'll have to ask them later what it was. On September 7, 2007, Junior Witter faced Vivian Harris. 
Witter dominated throughout the match. And in the fourth round, he made the Guyanese boxer listen to an unpleasant referee count for the first time. Witter concluded the bout with a perfect left hook in the seventh round, dropping Harris by the ropes. The impact was so forceful that Harris spat out his mouth guard while lying down, taking quite a while to recover. Whenever Lucas Martin Matisse entered the ring, spectators were immediately tuned in for an exciting spectacle, because they knew this guy never takes it easy in the ring. On January 26, 2013, the Argentine vividly defended his interim WBC title in the first light welterweight, destroying American middleweight Mike Dallas Jr. Already at the end of the first round, Matisse's powerful right-hand punch sent the contender into a deep knockout. Speed advantage, stick and move. Okay. And meanwhile, Matisse's already knocked him down and out. You wanted a faster start, Mamma Mia, you have it. What did we say about taking off the year with a bang? What a knockout. This guy can punch. Man, he can punch. An immediate medical attention for Mike Dallas Jr. And it's already great to see that he is back up on his feet, the doctor. On August 18th, 2007, Arthur Abraham once again demonstrated his extraordinary punching abilities, defending his IBF middleweight title against the resilient compatriot Corin Gaver. The incredibly aggressive contender fought fiercely, like an enraged wolverine, earning applause from fans in the stands. However, from the seventh round, the initiative firmly passed into Abraham's hands, who systematically built up his advantage, shaking his opponent with powerful blows. Even the resilient Gaver could not withstand such a beating. In the 11th round, Abraham's fearsome left hook put an end to the desperate resistance of the Armenian Braveheart. On December 3rd, 2016, Namibian Southpaw Julius Ndongo strongly upset Russian fans, taking the IBF title in the first super lightweight from the undefeated Edward Troyanovsky, who was considered the clear favorite of the fight. There was no real fight. Already in the 40th second of the confrontation, Julius's perfect left straight sent the Russian into a heavy knockout. Get his stool. Get his stool. No! Stay right there. Stay right there. Give me a stool. No, 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 no. Give me a stool. You guys stay back. Stay right there. Oh my god, man. My god. Wait, wait. My god. You what the f man. When you're ready, doctor. When you're ready? Doctor, okay. For Tyre BF, I'll be the world champion, baby. Oh, I'm defeated. On September 25, 2004, Glenn Johnson, defending the IBF light heavyweight title for the first time, achieved the most significant victory of his professional career by knocking out the legendary Roy Jones. 
The aggressive style of the Jamaican, continuously pressing his opponent, paid off. After eight rounds, the champion was confidently ahead on all three judges' scorecards. However, Johnson wasn't willing to leave the fate of the fight to the judges. In the ninth round, a precise right hook from Glenn sent Jones into a knockout. Felix Trinidad is rightfully considered one of the most formidable punchers in boxing history. On April 3, 1998, the idol of Puerto Rican fans once again demonstrated the intimidating power of his fists, defending the IBF junior middleweight title against Congolese boxer Eder Zulu. In the fourth round, Trinidad's signature left hook sent the challenger into a knockout. After such a brutal fiasco, Zulu ended his professional boxing career. Canadian David Lemieux was never a top-class boxer. Still, his entertaining boxing style and powerful punch quickly made him a favorite among Canadian fans. On March 11, 2017, the Canadian brawler once again delighted them with an impressive performance. American Curtis Stevens was brutally knocked out by a powerful left hook in the third round. On February 26, 2000, Arturo Thunder Gotti lived up to his nickname in a bout against Joey Gamache. The significantly larger and more physically powerful Canadian dominated from the beginning, sending his opponent to the canvas twice in the first round. In the second round, Gotti's powerful combination sealed the fate of the unfortunate Gamache in a brutal knockout. March 4, 1986, meeting with Jerry Kutsia. For 24-year-old prospect Bruno, this fight was the best manifestation of the legitimacy of his claims to the championship title. Former world champion from South Africa Jerry Kutsia, who had victories over Michael Dokes and James Tillis, was considered a serious test for the young puncher from London. But Bruno didn't seem to notice the experienced opponent, knocking him out hard already in the first round. But after Jerry's second fall, it was pointless to start counting down. Kutsia's cut underneath the left eye has been cut many times in recent fights, and he's cut again. What a start by Bruno. 55 seconds, a right hand, and another. Surely he can't get it over inside a round. Kutsia's only been stopped twice. 
He's got him again. He won't get up from that. He's stretched out over the photographers. He'll never make it. He's out, out, out. And Bruno is on his way to a crack at the world title. You can hardly believe it. Terry Lawless can hardly believe it. That's the most amazing win we've seen in the British ring for many years. And Cooks here is still out. Under two minutes. Bruno has got to be the hardest hitting heavyweight in the world today. And he's just proved it on the former heavyweight champion of the world. Deontay Wilder versus Dominic Brazil. In 2019, Wilder unleashed a devastating right hand that knocked out Brazil in the first round, securing his 40th knockout victory. The bell and round one, Brazil hoping to produce it. Wilder, Wilder obliterated him in the rematch, and Wilder told us Brazil exactly the same way as he lands the one-two cover. We thought Brazil having 18 knockouts total. Wild KOs. Ooh, going to the body with that left hand. And rarely. And that's something his trainer, former double punch, Polly, go to the body with the right and then the right uppercut on the inside. He's shaking his head. He's getting hit with well, the right and hand. That's oh, been that's the thing. already hurt. Wilder. Top of the head. All over Brazil. Mullen Brazil. Oh, but Brazil comes back with a counter right hand. On top of that, not even on the chin or anyone on the face, and Brazil was uh, throw with him and oh, oh, oh. Wilder hit so hard, they are feeling it in Brazil. Mamma mia! Eight, nine, ten. That's it. That's it. And the fight to his feet. He's in no condition to go. That is what Deontay Wilder wanted. The early part of the fight used his power to. End. Naoya Inoue versus Juan Carlos Payano. Inoue displayed his incredible power in 2018. <laughs> Puerto Rican, the killer Kermit Cintron was never considered a top-tier star, but his fights were usually always spectacular. On July 14, 2007, Cintron became the author of one of the best knockouts of the year, defending his IBF title in the light middleweight division in an incredibly brutal manner. In the first round, Argentine puncher Walter Dario Matisse found himself on the canvas. His career. Six for Matisse. On the interesting aspects, the right hand Big by right Centron hand by hurt Matisse. Matisse's never been knocked down. It's a right hand and he goes down for the first time in his career. with the count, there's the bell to end round one. So much for that part of his resume. But the electricity is now starting to build as a result of the action these guys are creating in the ring. Right hand sends Matisse down again. The unpleasant procedure continued in the next three minutes. The fight was concluded with Cintron's deadly one-two sending the contender into a heavy knockout still in the second round. Oh, and a left right combination of Matisse down and it's over! In round number two! The accuracy of Kermit Cintron was the difference. Matisse is a devastating left-hooking puncher, but could not land that shot against the much more accurate... For most boxing fans, the legendary Bernard Hopkins is known as a spoiler capable of drawing up almost any fight. But the earlier version of The Executioner had little in common with his later career. On March 16, 1996, 
Defending his IBF middleweight title, Bernard delivered one of the most impressive performances of his career. In the fourth round, a powerful series from the Executioner sent the previously undefeated Joe Lipsy into a heavy knockout. After such a fiasco, Lipsy retired. That knockout from Hopkins turned out to be too heavy. It was a right uppercut by Bernard Hopkins, and that hurt Joe Lipsy badly. He's talking to Dr. Robert Boy in the ring. He's fully conscious. Dr. Boy, the physician, sitting him up. Remember, about 30 seconds prior to that, a combination hit Joe Lipsy clean in the head. You could see his reaction slowed. And what an uppercut, Alex. And Bernard Hopkins goes over to, to embrace and look at Joe. On May 31st, 2014, Carl Froch had a rematch with George Groves. A powerful blow from the Cobra right in the eighth round sent Groves to a knockout. After this fight, Froch announced his retirement. The love of this is going on. The success is coming. But Froch digging in has more of those body shots. And he stays with it, but catches another left hand. Digs in. Vladimir Klitschko vs. Kubrat Pulev Klitschko's thunderous left hook in 2014 sent Pulev crashing to the canvas, resulting in a knockout victory for the Ukrainian heavyweight. On August 12, 2023, former two-time world champion and heavyweight Anthony Joshua reminded everyone of the power in his fists. The fight between AJ and Robert Hellenius wasn't a showcase of excitement, but its conclusion was remarkable. In the seventh round, a powerful right-hand punch from the Londoner brought down the Finn as if he were a tree. 
There was no point in counting. From Joshua, round five. The 18 stone is dangerous, Andy, and you do not want to miss. Struggling to land the right hand. It's caused the swelling on the eye. But to get the right hand, you've got to take that extra couple of inches, not a move. Oh! oh that hand. Lands the conclusive right hand. It's all over. Fade, and here it comes over the top. Look at the feet. That right hand goal, bang, it's good night against anybody. It wasn't like he walked into the shot. Right spot. He's on a stool. I said before, he has the same. On June 19th, 2021, the promising Uzbek boxer Bektamir Melikuziev faced the highly experienced Gabriel Rosado, who had unsuccessfully contended for championship titles in the distant past. The fight was dictated by the more aggressive and faster prospect, who knocked down the veteran in the first round. Over time, Bektamir acted increasingly openly, without thinking about defense. The price for such carelessness was high. Waiting for the right moment, Rosado delivered a powerful right hook in the third round, sending his opponent into a deep knockout. Boom! Right there, right on the right side of the jaw, left side. Pacquiao and Marquez, Marquez sending him up with that right hand. Melakuzia coming face first. Anytime a fighter falls face first, you know he. On November 20th, 2010, a rematch between Paul Williams and Sergio Martinez took place. A powerful left swing sent Williams into a heavy knockdown in the second round. Subsequently, this particular knockout became the leader in the list of the best knockouts of the year. Good left hand, oh. and down goes right. Williams. I think it was a right hand. Right hand, Williams through the left, Williams down. He's not getting up, guys. Not getting up. That is the knockout of the year, if nothing else. A sensational, shocking, one-punch knockout of a normally iron-chinned, top-notch fighter. We was as a man was so much on the attack and aggression that he didn't even expect I'll see the punch. And that's the worst punch in the world, a punch you don't see. Martinez's left got there first. And Williams was out from the moment the punch hit him. On July 26, 1986, rising star of world boxing Mike Tyson impressively destroyed the promising Marvis Frazier. Just 30 seconds into the match, Tyson knocked out his opponent. We're going to be out of here very, very quickly. Uppercut and Marvis is hurt. Frazier is down. Joe Cortez moves in to have a look. And he's going to stop the fight. It did not last 20 seconds. Tyson goes over to take a look at Marvis Frazier, obviously quite concerned. A terrific uppercut. The same punch with which Tyson knocked out Jesse Ferguson the first time you saw him here on ABC Sports. Watch the uppercut, the right uppercut. We're going to show it to you in just a moment. Right now, there is Jim Jacobs, yes. Our manager of Mike Tyson talking to him. 30-second knockout sensation. Watch the right hand of Mike Tyson. Marvis in the corner and trapped. There it was. Just clipped him right on the chin. The left was unnecessary. Marvis is badly hurt at this point. Uppercut again. And there, Marvis is out on his feet. Everything after this is just incidental. 
The Fraser camp had expressed confidence before the bout. You wonder if they truly believe that Marvis could handle this kind of an attack. You see that stiff left hand, that jab that Mike is not... Zab Super Judah's ring entrance never left spectators indifferent. On December 13, 2003, the American delighted his fans by vividly defending his WBO title in the light welterweight division. Colombian Jaime Rangel was knocked out by a powerful left hook in just 72 seconds into the fight. He says he will stand his ground now despite the bad hands he's been suffering of late. He needs to look On November 10th, 2018, Ukraine's pride Alexander Usyk once again affirmed his title as the strongest boxer in the cruiserweight category, defending his WBC, WBA, IBF, and WBO belts against former world champion Tony Bellew. The fight was not the easiest for the undisputed world champion, and the initial rounds belonged to the English boxer. However, with time, the advantage of the Ukrainian technician became apparent, increasing with each round. In the eighth round, Alexander, with a bright combination, sent the exhausted Bellew to the canvas, forcing the referee to stop the fight. Closing this gap with, with real, you know, middle of the push. Bellew, when a guy adjusts to you, you have to adjust back, and Bellew never adjusted to that wide left hand. His reflexes and timing seemed to slow as his energy did, so that shot there... He then punches are amplified massively when you're exactly. tired, and you saw that, and there's the effect of that looping left cross that lands. Great, right. brave performance, nothing to be ashamed of. On June 17, 1995, Big Daddy Riddick Bowe vividly defended his WBO title avenging his defeat in the amateurs to the Cuban Jorge Luis Gonzalez. The American dominated throughout the match, and in the sixth round, a logical conclusion was reached. Bo's powerful right blow sent the Cuban boxer into a heavy knockout. It is worth noting that this was Gonzalez's first defeat in professional boxing. Lands the left hand, just misses the right hand behind it. Gonzalez ties him up. right by Gonzalez, but Bo comes right through it. He's delivering the punishment. It's hard to turn him out. Good straight left hand by Bo. Gonzalez having some difficulty now. And Bo landing constantly to Gonzalez's head. Wide open for that right hand. He takes another right hand shot. Wobbles away. Paper, that looks like a big advantage. Ooh, right there it goes. That should do it. That should do it. That's the first time Gonzalez has been down as a pro. And if he gets up from this, he fools me. Now, Mills Lane doesn't bother to complete the count. Another terrific right hand shot for Riddick Bowe. And I got to tell you, Larry, I wasn't sure we'd ever see him look this good again. He needed the challenge. He was getting too many easy opponents. He was getting careless. Mucho. Can't give a, a feed a fighter setups and setups. Smiling and modest outside the ring, Joe Messi quickly caught the attention of boxing fans with his vibrant style and powerful knockout punch. On September 27, 2003, Little Joe made a serious statement to all top heavyweights. Dangerous puncher Deverell Williamson was brutally knocked out by Joe in the first round. As he ducked to left and came back big. He's hurt. And Williamson hurt. hurt. Joe Macy's he's got an early opportunity. Down he goes. Crowd goes nuts. That's it. Knockout for Joe Macy. Lightning 
strikes on boxing after dark in Buffalo. And he <laughs> looks good every second of the round, setting it up. Yes. Got him with a few jabs, trying to move and getting underneath the jabs, and then exploding and moving in and out, exploding, moving in and out. Very smart fight.